Okay, so um, just coming into a little close quarters um, scenario, just to give you guys a little bit of a feeling for what a vessel like this is to operate, is like to operate at slow speed. Um, first things first, I'm driving these nannies. These are twin uh, 270 horsepower nannies. They have the Morse control. I'm quite used to this. This is what you would find on a traditional sailing yacht or older powerboats. When we say Morse control, that means a cable connecting to the motors. Now, if you are not used to this or don't want this, you don't have to have it. Just upgrade to the Yanmar 350s, they're a V8, and they have electronic throttles, and it's a completely different experience. Um, so let's just put the boat in a um, in three meters of water. I'm just gonna put myself in between these moorings here. Um, I have a, a bow and stern thruster just here and here, operated with the on and off button like so. Um, visibility is really good all around. I'm just gonna stop the boat. Okay, and I'm just gonna do transverse thrust and turn the boat. Just... Yeah, that's pretty easy. So um, this is a pretty much a full keel boat. We just saw her out of the water, or not this particular one, another one of these, out of the water at the factory, and you do, um, when you have a keel involved, you are going to have some natural resistance. I'm just going to keep that boat turning. Um, you are going to have some natural resistance to the boat wanting to turn around. But with the prop location and the amount of torque available to me at the moment, I can just increase my power and the boat's going to go. And then I can decrease that power. And if I'm not comfortable or not prepared to do it with the throttles, you have another option. The thrusters. And look at that, plenty of power, no issues there. So you can equip yourself with bow and stern thrusters if you see the need, um, or you can just put a bow thruster on it because with the twin engines and with the bow thruster, she's quite capable. So I don't really see any challenges to that um, if you are coming from a sailing yacht if you're coming from a motorboat uh, this is seems pretty predictable so um, conservative boating is probably the term I would use um, close that heavy solid door and let's make our way out and take you home I think so we had downwind cruising before and we might have a little bit of upwind on the way home um, we'll just see how we go and the tide looks low. So I'm just gonna head out here and see if I can stay in the deep stuff. I like deep water. <laughs> it's much better than shallow. So, out we go. So yeah, I see this boat being something you would um, quite easily be able to go and uh, either retrieve the anchor if you're on anchor or um, uh, go and uh, drop the mooring back in the water, do it yourself come back to this helm door, um, close it or leave it open, and off you go. It's as simple as that. Um, it's, a key, it's a key start on these particular motors. I've got my RPMs on either side, and then I've got my temps, pressures, and volts all displayed in an analog display, and then I have digital displays as well. I've got, um, I can have radar, I can have chart plotter. This one, this particular one doesn't have the card in it, so we won't see exact chart displays. I'm just keeping an eye on the depth. And just, just putting along here at a slow speed, it's quite leisurely. The noise levels, even though these nannies, I would say are probably a little bit noisier than the Yanmars, don't really see uh, much of an intrusion on my ability to socialize with friends because that engine bay was quite well insulated. So that's okay. Just, just Cruising along here at 5.5 knots, we're in an eight knot zone at the moment, so we don't want to go much faster, or we don't want to go any faster than eight knots for obvious reasons. Um, so let's just notch it up a little bit. I'm just gonna aim for that rock out there. If I go quiet, it means I'm concentrating because I don't know these waters. And the tidal range in England is not like Sydney. They, these guys, like you go up some of these rivers like we were just near the factory today, and um, all their, there's yachts, they have legs on the side of them. They literally sit on the mud at low tide. That's how much tidal range you get 
around here. It's completely different. You must get some seriously ripping tides when it's on the run. So I would, um, I'd want to be paying attention around here in, in terms of anchoring your boat, that sort of thing. It's a whole another kettle of fish in terms of calculating how much chain you've got out, that sort of thing. And, um, and, and also jumping in the water because it's probably quite cold here. I don't, wouldn't want to jump in and find I'm getting taken away from the tide and can't swim back to the boat. That'd be a little bit awkward. Um, okay, something just popped out of the water there. So there must be some sea life. I don't know what that was, it looked like a seal. Lovely castle. It's quite pleasure, pleasurable. Six knots, let's bring her up to eight. So you do really feel the keel um, keeping the boat on course. It's, you know, that keel like some down east style boats that are, you see in America, they um, have the V section and the keel doesn't start until about halfway um, down the back of the hull. This one pretty much starts at the bow and the keel carries all the way to the back of the boat. And so again, if you've sailed a full keel sailing yacht, you're gonna feel some similarities. Um, she's got solid glass construction below the waterline and uh, about this up to about this much above the waterline until it goes to a little bit of foam core. Um, and what, what's that doing? It's just giving you quite a little weight down low, giving you a really good center of gravity and giving you a nice amount of stability. Oh, we've got some good wind out there. So this will be a nice little ride back upwind to demonstrate what this boat is capable of. I do expect to get some water over the decks because that's gonna be, that looks like a combination of wind and tide out there, but there's probably 15 to 20 plus knots of breeze there. So we'll see how she feels. Okay, we've just got this isolated danger mark here, so I'm gonna leave that to starboard. And then I've got some shipping channel markers and we're gonna to head towards the port of Falmouth in that direction over there. And we're gonna have some breeze across the decks from starboard to port um, and probably a little bit of a short, sharp, fetchy type stuff in terms of the waves. So it'll be interesting to see how the hull handles going sort of across and up the wind as opposed to down as we were before. Um, I suspect very comfortable because this is the style of hull that you want in these conditions. Isn't that cool? Why can't we have castles back home? I love a good castle, that's great. I'm sure there's a lot of very interesting history about this place. Slowly increase the speed. So, I've got my wiper operation just here on the digital screen. I've got my Lenko trim tabs just here. I suspect I'm gonna be dropping the trim tabs um, as we go upwind. That's the kind of thing I would do on most power boats with a bit of a cutting bow, uh, just to essentially lower the cutting action, more cutting action into the waves to increase my comfort. All right, eight knots. So I'm just gonna give one third trim tabs down. I'm gonna start bringing the speed up. I'm gonna take that one third to two thirds. I'm just gonna sit it there at about 10 knots, set my course. So here we are getting exposed into the chop and the wind coming from the starboard side. Okay, quite comfortable. So I'm hoping you can see some of this water coming up over the windscreen. It's not flat water, which is great for a test of a vessel like this. So let's increase that speed. I feel like she wants to go and flatten out a little bit more in these upwind conditions. I'm not gonna go straight into it just yet. I'm just gonna let the boat take the waves at a slightly awkward angle and see what we can demonstrate. This is comfortable. It's incredibly comfortable. At 14 knots, the boat feels good. I'm giving give it a little bit more bow down. Oh yeah, so you do notice that. You do notice it really locks in. Now let's go in to the swell and increase the speed just a little bit. So 
this is gentlemen's cruising right now because hopefully you can see on the camera we've got white caps we've got short and sharp waves i could have a coffee sitting here and i would hardly spill the coffee so that's impressive and that's the sort of thing that i suspect many of you are going to be looking for um, at, a state, at a certain stage in your life. So guys, that was an absolute pleasure. Um, who buys a boat like this? Um, somebody who wants incre incredibly comfortable, gentlemanly cruising experiences. Somebody who wants to um, enjoy the normal days, but also come out on days like today and think nothing of it, because that's what a, a style of hull like this will do for you. And then of course, just somebody who wants ultimate British handcrafted quality. Uh, it's as simple as that. These boats, uh, I'll put them at the top end of the sort of boat that many of you are going to be um, comparing it with or to. And if you're looking for something that you can consider as an investment, something that you consider as a, a family heirloom, uh, th this Duchy 35 is gonna do that for you. Um, this will make you happy for a long time. My name's Dan Jones. This has been Dan's Boat Life. If you like this content, if you get value from it, just follow the channel, give us a like, share the videos with your mates. I hope it's useful for you. And if you do genuinely find it useful, consider supporting the Patreon. Thanks very much. See you on the next one.